Okay, so I'd like to uh, dedicate this talk to David Rathbaugh. Okay, I'm a microbial ecologist. One part poet, one part nerd, two part biologist. I pursue elements that move through and are relevant to microbes, environments, and society. That's you. Your lakes, your oceans, and mountains of granite, microbes change the planet. From a highly productive state to a relatively pleasant place. They mitigate anthropocinity, they maintain their essential salinity, they fight pathogens in our gut. True artists in residence for three billion years. But, wait, we're stuck in time and place. Two disciplines are collapsing on a two dimensional phase. Ecosystem ecology. We don't like her from the show. Clean our water, transform our soil so plants can grow. Microbial ecology. We're learning more than we ever thought we'd know about the unseen majority. We know their names, their shapes, their sizes, their undeniable superiority. But can we learn more about how they fit into what we know of an ecosystem skit? The planet's warming, so what does that mean? Aeolian nitrogenous delivery, remote and unseen? Surely these pressures change what it means to be a cell in a complex community that teems with diversity of competitors and predators alike. It's survival of the fittest every day, every night. In an homage to Santo Rosalia, touch it to them. Why so many little plankton in one little flat? And if you don't know that today's past, microbes outnumber those plankton one billion to one. And of these billion cells, we've only just begun. There are a billion cells in three drops from a lake. There are billions more in one cup of soil shape. More cells in my mouth than all the people who ever lived. More cells alive than grains of sand ever did. More cells than stars in the sky. But what does each cell say? Which ones answer our why? We sequence the bejesus out of the 16 edits. <laughs> we're, we're writing mountains of papers, mostly unread and a taste of obscene. <laughs> we still don't know which cells we what. Is a generalist general, but a specialist is a but? In an inhibitor inhibiting a competitor's domain, or this functional redundancy rule it all the same. So where does that leave us? Where do we go? Well, let's step back and evaluate the show. Microbial ecology. Ah, ecology. It's a science. It's not theology. It's an endless well of established theory not yet tested on the unseen cell. What lot could say to Volterra? <laughs> <laughs> Competition rules supreme. All things can't fit all environments. That's obscene. What about the distributions in time and space? Aha, there's island biogeography ready to define each place. Neutral theory, species sorting, mass effects, and more. Ecological stoichiometry, metabolic theory to unify the score. Even lowly resource competition was developed in a diatomic way. Theories abundantly abundant and all right from microbial space. So I propose that we redirect our aim. Let's make a transformation from this observation game to an ecology name for theories that tame, very deterministic and stochastic all the same. Let's not ask, if I alter the temperature, will the microbes change? Or who's there? And is the who who's there really the same? But rather, at what cost is the population or function loss? If phosphorus requirements go up, what must come down? The resistance to bioactivity that keeps some cells around must come with a change, unknown, unfound. So here's a call to all microbial colleges, big and small. Let's move beyond the descriptive street ball and take a more focused and driven approach. Let's use mechanistic theory and ecology beyond reproach. Enough of the interpolated interpretations of what we think they say. Let's test math mathematical <coughs> equations in a big league way. <laughs> Why do microbes live with no oxygen or organic sea? Why do microbes live under a, mice, a, a mile of solid ice free? Why are microbes ever present in air, land, and sea? Well, then Marius once said to me, because they can, man, because they can. <laughs> <laughs> and if E.O. Wilson could do it all over again, he said, he said, uh, I, I'd be a microbial ecologist. All that diversity and wonder just under a rock in my back garden today. So on the shoulder of these giants and others, let's stand and extend a hand to the environmental and computational scientists.
the light. The college is here for you today, in the night. You can use its light to guide and understand these billions of terabytes before they get out of hand. So in summary, I say, should we sequence the world and connect the dots? Well, you all go ahead, but I think not. I'll identify trade-offs and problems to theology that cross biologies and disciplinary ideology. A micro can't be best at all things, so surely we can define what makes these cage birds think. Thank <laughs> you.